All right, it's time to finally talk about the elephant in the room. There are a lot of videos circulating around YouTube claiming that me, Alan Parr, is a false teacher. And if I'm being honest with you, it bothers me. Like I am a real human being. And what human being would not be bothered if you're out here trying to make godly biblical content and you have a crew of people out there that are making videos that are disparaging and discouraging their audience from following me and telling them to unsubscribe from my channel. I'd be lying to you if I wasn't at least a little bit tempted to make a response video to all of the videos that have been made about me because many of them misrepresent my views, they use sound bites, take certain things out of context. So I figured I would finally go ahead and respond to all of the negativity and the criticism that has been launched against me over the years. Now, why am I making this video? Because this isn't some sort of rant or uh, an attempt to clear my name or anything like that, because by now you all know me well enough to know that everything that I do on this channel is biblical, it's purposeful, and it is intentional. And so the real reason why I'm making this video is to hopefully model for you all how you should handle or respond to any sort of negativity or haters or criticism that might be unleashed in your life. So I've got about six reasons why I don't respond to most of, if not all of the criticism uh, that people have uh, shared on YouTube publicly about me. And I'm going to hopefully give you some biblical reasons that you can follow in your own life as well. Reason number one is that I don't want to get in the way of the gospel of Christ being preached. Now, in Philippians chapter one, the context here is that the apostle Paul has been unjustly put in prison for preaching the gospel. Now, while he was in prison, there were some people who were some haters of Paul. Maybe they were jealous of his ministry or whatnot, and they took the opportunity, knowing that Paul could not do what he wanted to do because he was in prison, Paul could not preach. Well, they took the opportunity to uh, to disparage Paul's name and to malign him and slander him and things like that. And so this was Paul's response here. He says, it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. So Paul is saying, hey, there are some people out there that are genuinely preaching the gospel, and hey, they've got great motives, they're pure motives, okay, good, kudos to you. But there's another group of people out there that they, Paul's like, they know that their motives are not really, you know, pure, right? Uh, and they intend to, to create emotional harm to Paul with their message. And he says, those people have impure motives. But notice Paul's response. He says, but that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. So Paul says, you know what? Even if their motives are impure, even if they are trying to tear me down and slander me and malign me, I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to get in the way because at the end of the day, the gospel is still being preached. And so for many people who make response videos about me, if they're preaching the gospel, if people are coming to Christ or people are learning the word of God from their channel, far be it from me to do what they're doing, right? To discourage people from following these people simply because I might disagree with a point of doctrine here or there. Let me not get in the way of what Christ may want to do through their ministries uh, the way they may be trying to uh, discourage people from following my ministry. So that's the first reason. The second reason is because, if I'm being honest with you, I don't want to give them a platform. And what I mean by that is, if you notice, most of the people who make response videos about me or even some other people, if I'm being honest, most of them, uh, they're smaller channels, right? They're smaller channels, and if I'm being honest, 
a lot of times they put YouTubers who have larger platforms, their names and their pictures and their thumbnails because they're trying to get views. It's for shock value. They're trying to get momentum on their channel. It's the same thing that many secular YouTubers do. They put Mr. Beast, who is like the largest YouTuber in the world, or put his name in their title and uh, their his face on their thumbnails because they know if other people see Mr. Beast on their thumbnail or their title, then they're going to be more uh, uh, inclined to watch that video or whatever, right? So I get that, okay? That's fine. But for me to make a response video to a channel that, a smaller channel that I don't agree with and I name them, then what I'm doing is now I'm exposing my entire audience to their ministry and giving them a platform and giving them a voice. And uh, that's just not something that I want to do. Reason number three is that I am trying to avoid any sort of division in the body of Christ. The Bible says, again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. Listen, if I make a response video to somebody who made a response video about me, and then they make another response video, and then you got all these other YouTubers who are making these response videos about response videos about response videos, what's happening, y'all? It is furthering the debate, it's furthering the division, it's furthering all this back and forth, and it's not productive. That's why Paul says to Timothy, don't get involved in it. It's foolish, it's ignorant, and it only starts fights. He says, stay away from those things. So because I read the Bible and I see these verses, I'm staying away from it. I'm staying away from the drama. I'm staying away from responding because many of you have emailed me say, hey, Brother Allen, did you see this video that somebody made about me or about you? And they'll send me these links and different things. And it, when are you going to respond? What's your response? How are you going to respond? My response is I'm not going to respond because the Bible clearly tells me that I need to stay away from any sort of foolish, ignorant arguments that are going to lead to division, strife, and fights. Not only that, guys, I am very, very confident in what I teach on this particular channel. And most of the channels that are, you know, launching these videos or whatever, they just have a slightly different or nuanced view about something that, in my mind, is secondary, right? And many of them, they'll say, oh, Brother Allen is a false teacher because he teaches eternal security, right? Or he teaches this particular nuanced view of this, that, or the other. I can tell you that the views that I hold are consistent with the views that I learned in Dallas at seminary, Dallas Theological Seminary, which is considered by many, and I'm not boasting, I'm just saying it's considered by many the Harvard of theological schools. I mean, this is the best theological school in the country. And most reputable Bible scholars agree with about 98 to 99% of my theological teachings. What you're getting from this channel is, is not heresy or false teaching or strange teaching that's different it's consistent with Orthodox Christianity that has been passed down to us from generation to generation. I'm not making up any sort of new doctrine or anything like that, all right? So that's the next reason. Now, the fourth reason might be the most important, and that's the fact that it's a distraction, and it takes me off of my mission of preaching the gospel. Notice that uh, Paul says this, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Paul says, I'm on mission. I can't be distracted with all this extra stuff because my mission is to, is to point people to Christ, to tell them of the good news, the wonderful grace of God. Guys, if I were to trace down and, and track down all the different videos that have been made about me over the years, you know, I, my whole channel would be about trying to clear my name and refuting this and rant and going on a rant and trying to defend myself to this person, that person, this person, that person. I'm a Bible teacher. I don't have time to do those things. And so that's going to deter me and distract me from my mission. So what I want to encourage you all is that when hate and negativity and, cr and criticism comes into your life, make sure that you detect that as being a an attack from the enemy that might be... Now, obviously, you, you, you need to assess whether the criticism is true, so always listen to it and see, okay, is there something I need to change? Okay, yes, do that for sure. Be humble, have a humble spirit about that. But after you've done that, see this as, you know, this might be the enemy trying to distract me from what it is God has called me to do in this moment or to discourage me so that I don't even have the mental and the, the, the emotional uh, state of mind to be able to focus and do what God has called me to do. So please be on guard for that. Okay, reason number five is because not engaging is, if I'm being honest, it's more 
Christ-like. Notice what Peter says. He, speaking of Jesus, did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. See, so he says, hey, even Jesus, whenever Jesus was on the cross, when he was being reviled, when he was being insulted, Jesus did not open his mouth. He did not retaliate. He did not threaten revenge when he suffered. I'm saying a whole lot more about my character, and I'm not boasting, I'm just being honest with you, when I don't respond as to when I do. Because what I'm doing is I'm saying, you know, I'm gonna rise above this. Yes, these people have made some videos and things like that, but I'm gonna rise above it. And that's what I'm trying to model for you all. Rise above the negativity. Rise above. You're better than that, right? Rise above the haters and the critics, the critics in your life. Rise above that. You don't need to respond. Why? Because it says this next. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Jesus says, you know what? I don't have to do anything. God's going to fight for me. God's going to handle these people. God is going to deal with these people. And that's the mentality I have, guys. I can't tell you how many times people have made videos about me, and then they'll email me months later, Brother Parr, I made a video about you on my YouTube channel, and I just want to say the Lord convicted me about it. I had the wrong spirit. I shouldn't have said that. Man, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm going to take the video down. You know what I do? Hey, that's okay, brother. That's okay. I understand. God is dealing with people. And, and, and that's something, guys, when people are coming against you, trust God to deal with them. Trust the Spirit of God who lives in them to work on their hearts the way God is working in your life. And finally, number six, I choose to take the high road. Notice what it says here. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. You see, whenever you respond in negativity, what you're doing is that you are allowing someone else to control you by taking you out of your Christian character, they are taking you from a place of operating in the spiritual realm to now responding in a fleshly realm. You're letting somebody else dictate and control your character. The Bible says don't let that evil control or conquer or overcome you, but rather conquer that evil by what? Doing good. So to say a whole lot more about your character if you just don't respond. So guys, at the end of the day, these are the reasons, uh, amongst a few others, that I just don't choose to respond to the negativity that is out there about me. And uh, at the end of the day, guys, I am trusting in your discernment to kick in so that as you are watching these videos and you're listening to people saying, hey, Alan Parr is a false teacher, John McRae, false teacher, Andy Stanley is a false teacher, Ruslan is a false teacher, Joe Kirby is a false teacher, well, whoever the people that you listen to, I'm trusting that your discernment will kick in and be like, ah, I, I don't, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I, 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 you know, I hear this, these points, they're very, they, they sound good, but yeah, I just, I, I don't see that. I don't see, I'm trusting in your discernment to kick in there, all right? So guys, I hope that you found this video helpful, that you can apply these principles to any sort of criticism or hate or negativity that may come in your life. And hopefully that answers the final question as to my reaction or my response to why I just choose not to respond to most, if not all, of what uh, people might choose to put out about me. All right, hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.